In the waste fields strong with barbed wire, where the thistles grow over hidden minefields, there exists a curious freedom. Between the guns of the deployed powers, between the march of patrols and police dogs, there is an uncultivated strip of land from which law and man himself have retreated. Along this uneasy border, the old life of the wild has come back into its own. Weeds grow and animals slip about in the night where no man dares to hunt them. A thin, uncertain line fringes the edge of oppression. The freedom it contains is fit only for birds and floating thistle down for, or a wandering fox. Nevertheless, there must be men who look upon it with envy. The imagination can grasp this faint underscoring of freedom, but there are few who realize that precisely similar lines run a delicate tracery along every civilized road in the West, or that these hedges of thorn apple and osage orange are the last refuge of wildlife between the cultivated fields of civilization. It takes a refugee at heart, a wistful glancer over fences, to sense this one-dimensional world. But it is there. I can test to it, for I myself am such a fugitive. This confession need alarm no one. I am, revi I, am revi I am relatively harmless. I have not broken or entered or passed illegally over boundaries. I am not on the list of the police. The only time I have gazed to the wrong end of the gun, I have been the injured party. Even this episode, however, took place many years ago and was in another country at the hands of foreigners. In spite of this, I repeat that I am a fugitive. I was born one. The world will say that this is impossible, that fugitives are made by laws and acts of violence, that without these preliminaries, no man can be called a fugitive, that without pursuit, no man can be hunted. It may be so. Nevertheless, I know that there are men born to hunt and some few born to flee, whether physically or mentally makes no difference. That is purely a legal quibble. The fact that I wear the protective coloration of sedate citizenship is a ruse of the fox. I learned it long ago. The facts of my inner life are quiet otherwise. Early, very early, the consciousness of this difference emerges. This is how it began for me. It begins in the echoing loneliness of a house with no other children, in the silence of a deafened mother, in the child head growing strangely aware of itself as it prattled over immense and solitary games. The child learned that there were shadows in the closets and a green darkness behind the closed drawn curtain of the parlor. He was aware of a cool twilight in the basement. He was afraid only of noise. Noise is the outside, the bully in the next block by whose house you had to pass in order to go to school. Noise is all the things you did not wish to do. It is the games in which you were pummeled by other children's big brothers. It is the sharp, demanding voices of adults who snatch your books. Noise is day, and out of that intolerable sunlight, you one pur your one purpose has been given, to escape. Few men have such motivations in childhood. Few are so constantly seeking for the loophole in the fern where the leaves swing shut behind them. But I anticipate. It is in the mind that the flight commences. It is there that the arc lights lay their shadows. It is there down those streets past unlit houses that a child runs on alone.